All right, welcome everyone. I think, we'll, uh, I think we're ready to get started. Thank you for joining us. This is a, a very exciting day for the city. Um, as you can see, just up the street, we have broken ground today on the Great Streets Main Street project after many years of work. This uh, project began um, in a very real way um, the day I was elected. It was, it, it was not, not because I was elected, but because voters endorsed that day the um, creation of what we call the downtown TIF district. The voters have weighed in on using that downtown TIF uh, several times in the years since, and there's also been many years of planning, of design, of engagement with the public. And as a result of all of that, um, I uh, am very grateful to say that uh, before leaving office, um, we are gonna be able to start this um, long awaited project. This is the final of three major downtown TIF investments in the heart of the city. And you can see all three of them um, we're, we're basically in the middle of them right here. So City Hall Park was built in part with TIF money. The new St. Paul Street, which was our first Great Streets project, was, was one of the three projects. And then this one is by far, far the largest. And this will stretch all the way from the corner of Main Street and Winooski Avenue to uh, Pine Street and, and, uh, uh, and Main Street down the hill. Um, when this is complete. The um, gateway, this, this whole gateway to the city will really be transformed. Um, you will now have the Church Street Marketplace intersecting with and joining a main street that has been completely rebuilt and transformed to support outdoor eating, to support outdoor art, to support active transportation, in addition to the continued use of Main Street, of course, by, by cars uh, and, and other vehicles. The wider sidewalks, shorter crosswalks, walks, and protected bike lanes will make it easier for everyone to travel to downtown and to Waterfront Park and back again. The um, Together, these three projects constitute the biggest public investment in the downtown in, in many decades, maybe ever. And with this, we're really just sort of at the midpoint. What will continue after here, because of the city's work and because of the work of our partners um, at City Place and our federal partners, the improvement of the downtown is going to go beyond just this Main Street project and will continue on to Cherry Street and Bank Street and the new streets through City Place. In total, there will be an additional more than $40 million of federal funding and TIF investment uh, being made in that part of the downtown in the years ahead. So, you know, in total, we've never seen this type of investment, public investment in the downtown, and it is being accompanied, as we hoped, with an unprecedented level of private investment. A lot of that has, we've talked about in, in the past. We um, have the two biggest development projects in the state's history are underway right now. You can see one of them from here as well, the City Place project. You can't quite see it, but we know the largest project in the state's history, Cambrian Rise, is on North Avenue. Um, we are seeing smaller projects respond to the changes in regulation and to the investment in the in uh, in public infrastructure as well, whether that's the City West departments that just opened a few weeks ago uh, down by August 1st, or the demolition that is going on right now uh, at the old YMCA where we're going to see almost 100 new additional homes built, or at the Nest Project that opened just uh, a, a couple years ago. Um, we are seeing an unprecedented level of private investment in housing and in businesses happening uh, right now as well. I think it's, I think it's important to, to, to note that and emphasize that because obviously Burlington, we know like cities across the country, around the world is, is challenged in, by the pandemic and the recovery that's happened since. We are, are seeing, uh, the, uh, we, have, we have seen challenges in the downtown this past year and last past couple of years that we haven't seen in the past. It's important that we not also see that while that is happening, 
there is great hope and investment in the future of this city. There are so many new businesses that are starting up. There are so many new people that are, are investing in the downtown. In many ways, the future of Burlington has never been brighter. So with that, um, uh, I just want to say a couple of thank yous and then we're going to hear from uh, several other, other folks. Um, none of this would be possible without the best in team, <clears throat> best in class team of department heads, planners, engineers, technical services folks, and more that are working for the, the city of Burlington. Um, uh, I, you know, I can't name everyone here and won't. I, I, we are going to get a chance to hear from Chapin Spencer in a moment, who has been the director of public works for 11 years now and as the head of this team in many ways. But I want to say thank you to everyone else that's here, our, our city engineer, Norm Baldwin, and the um, just, you can see a lot of the folks here, and I, 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 I'm, I'm grateful to each and every one of you. Um, I... Uh, want to note it's not just DPW we also have uh, our planning director Megan Tuttle is here um, our clerk treasurer department has been critical in this because of the the TIF aspects of the development CEDO any community development project CEDO is at the forefront I think Brian Pine is here somewhere here it is Brian um, and uh, the uh, city attorney's office has been critical in this the number, number of agreements that need to take place um, Kara Allen Rowie, are the head of our new depart newest department, the Business and Workforce Development Department, has been a key part of the engagement with all of the businesses during during this period. And uh, and I'm going to talk more about that uh, business, what this means for downtown businesses, and how we're going to ensure that Burlington stays open for business throughout this construction period in a moment. But first, um, let me. Uh, welcome uh, again the someone who has been so committed to this effort and all the other public investment that we've been making for 11 years now Chapin Spencer Chapin welcome thank you what a day here folks thanks for being here on Burlington's uh, one sunny day of the year so far <laughs> Uh, Mayor, I was wondering why, uh, after you spoke, why, now I know why I'm feeling so busy. I have to say, the number <laughs> of projects that this great community is focused on really shows the resilience that we are instituting through these investments for the future of Burlington. Uh, there are times where we debate in this community some of the highest elevations, the projects that you know pierce the sky, but we don't often talk about the lowest elevations in our city. <laughs> and the favorite one of the high-vis folks behind me is the ravine sewer. And that is a key element of this project. It turns 150 years old this year, so it is very apt that we recognize uh, this resource. And while it was a feat of engineering when it was built, it now restricts the dis development of the next phase of Burlington. That project, when it was built, helped advance Burlington in the early 20th century, but this Main Street project sets us on a course for future development, growth, and vitality in our great city. As you'll see behind me, a key element of the Main Street, Great Streets project is setting up a ravine bypass for this ravine sewer. The 48-inch pipe is behind us on the truck and will allow for smarter investments in housing and commerce. We're also uh, replacing the old sewer and water mains up and down the corridor that run directly under the street so that they don't pose risks to the investment we are making now or to business operations in the future. So let's just talk briefly about what we've done to prepare because we are aware that this is a large project that will have impact on our community. Some of the things that we've done is pre-characterize the soils along the corridor so that we know what we're digging up and can work with it efficiently and cost-effectively. 
two, as I said, we're replacing all of the wastewater and water services and laterals that are at risk of failure connecting our important businesses uh, to our utility and it doing so at no cost to the property owners on this corridor. In addition, uh, thanks to the leadership of Business and Workforce Development, we have a $15,000 grant to help continue promoting our great businesses. And lastly, I think it's important to know that through traffic control, all doors, every door of every business will be accessible during this project. There may be different ways to travel to it, but there will be avenues and we will make sure to help get you to where you need to go. So remember these things. Burlington remains open for business and the businesses need our support. So let's continue to invest in them. We have parking downtown. The downtown garage continues to have hundreds of spaces daily. We're working with a couple of other adjacent uh, garages and we'll have more information for you about those soon. There's more information at parkburlington.com and their project emails and it's as simple as signing up at greatstreetsbtv.com slash mainstreet. I can't say enough about the team behind me, around me. This is not DPW, this is not just the city. The fact that you know we have representatives of the Flynn, the business community, this is our collective project for future generations. Let's make the impact as big as we can for the future and uh, let's get this done. Thank you. All right. Um, next, we're going to hear from Hannah King, who is the Ward 8 City Councilor. The City Council has been a you know, critical partner in everything that gets done, of course, in the city, and there's been strong council support throughout this effort and this project is actually in uh, Ward 8 and we're excited to have Ward 8 City Councilor Hannah King with us here today. Sorry, I'm gonna proudly read off of my phone for this, but um, good afternoon everyone. My name is Hannah King and I'm the Ward 8 City Councilor. Thank you to the mayor and our dedicated city team for all of the work you've done on advancing this great project. Living in Ward 8 and working downtown means my most used method of transportation is walking. Like many Burlingtonians would agree, the more you walk, the more you get to know our city. Our sidewalks and streets suffer from wear and tear. It takes investment to upkeep our transportation infrastructure and it takes vision to reimagine it. Once completed, the Great Streets transformation will truly change the ways we experience and use our streets and sidewalks. This is truly exciting. The businesses and streets in our community are the backbone of our city, adding vibrancy in each corner of our city. I look forward to seeing how this historic project will improve the commercial experience. One other exciting aspect of the Great Streets project is that, believe it or not, it was unanimously approved by the city council. We don't always get to see that. Um, <laughs> But seriously, unanimous council support speaks to the broad support this initiative has and the work that went in to earn buy-in from the community at large. Our community is only as good as our streets and public spaces, and I'm excited to see how this project will aid in bettering both of those. Thank you. Next, uh, I'm excited to welcome to the podium Peggy O'Neill Vivanco, who really wears a, a number of uh, relevant, important hats uh, <clears throat> in this community. She is, first of all, the chair of the Public Works Commission, and the, uh, the Public Works Commission has worked very hard on this project for many years. The commission actually has to has sort of statutory authority over uh, a number of issues involving the public right away, and so they've been a key partner in this. Um, Peggy also has a big role with this wonderful Burlington High School program, the City and Lake Semester, and we'll speak about the many City and Lake students that we have here with us today. She also is one of the biggest active transportation advocates that the city has and has been for many years, and uh, this is a happy day for the, 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 the progress on active transportation too. So I'm excited uh, to get to share this with you, Peggy. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mara. Good afternoon, thank you all. Um, 
I'm also um, I'm also a mom. I'm also the director of the Vermont Clean Cities Coalition at UVM's Transportation Research Center. Um, and so it's with all these hats that I'm really thrilled to see the construction begin on this project today. Main Street, Great Street project, I think, is inspired by the people-centered past of, of Burlington's Main Street in the early 1900s that was focused on people moving around. It also is responding to the multimodal complexities of our present and setting us up for um, a more equitable, efficient, resilient, and sustainable transportation future that will prioritize safer, accessible flow of people and goods. You can ask any of these Burlington High School students about people and goods moving on our streets. Um, the result will really be a more inviting um, and economically vibrant street for all our users. Um, a few years ago, um, City Council had a resolution to incorporate more youth voices on our boards. So Public Works, instead of having one youth on our board, we brought our work to students. So we incorporated the youth perspective on this particular project with the Burlington High School, Burlington City and Lake Semester students, some of whom are here today. Our youth voices are really important. Um, so the cohort from two years ago, they worked with the city engineering team, they worked with the project consultants, they worked with Director Spencer, they worked with uh, a few of the Public Works Commissioners to add their insights to the, the design of Main Street. <clears throat> they expressed concern about accessibility, more green space, safe bike lanes, safer bus access, and pedestrian amen amenities for those who choose not to drive or don't have um, availability to a privately owned vehicle. All these pieces are incorporated into this final design. Some of the key aspects about this project that excite me are the increase in ADA accessible parking spaces, an increase in dynamic curb space for all our loading and unloading, um, shorter street crossings and more crosswalks that prioritize kids and our more vulnerable pedestrians. More civic spaces like this right here where businesses can flourish and community members can gather. Dedicated protected bike lane yay, between Pine Street and Winooski. An uphill eastbound bike lane to Willard Street. Striped bike lanes that lead to Battery Street. All of these moving Bur Burlington closer towards more efficient cycling network. And then two more points are an increase in enriched landscape with native plants and trees that sequester carbon, that filter our stormwater, and cool our increasingly heating city. Improvements, as you've heard, in our stormwater and sewer systems along Main Street are also part of this project. So as you can see, this project includes aspects from Burlington's newly adopted nature-based climate, solution, climate solutions plan, the walk bike plan, and our net zero energy roadmap. This is a testament to Burlington's commitment to creating a more inclusive, resilient, and enjoyable urban space for our residents, our visitors, and our business community. I want to emphasize, as everyone has said before, that Burlington is open for business during construction. Come downtown, support our businesses and our cultural institutions, and thank you so much. Okay, um, so thank you, Peggy. Um, one of those businesses that um, is right it, it, that is absolutely open, that is a key part of why we can say that Burlington is open for business and is going to stay open for business through this long construction project is the Flynn Center for the Performing Arts. Um, we are so grateful for the partnership uh, of the Flynn in keeping Burlington a great, dynamic, uh, <coughs> attractive downtown. Um, we know th that um, this project is going to, uh, that, that, that's a big job what the Flynn does day to day. And, you know, we, my office is right up there. We look out, we see hundreds of school kids from around the state being coming in and getting to uh, enjoy 
performances at the Flynn. It's a small, it's quite a production that the Flynn is able to get shows in and out of the downtown off of uh, Lower Church Street through their loading dock and all that's being made harder by this project and yet uh, I'm very excited Jay Wall is is here the executive director for the Flynn he's here to, to share some remarks and, and I'm happy to have this opportunity to say publicly Jay that the city is very committed to working with you throughout this to make sure that uh, we are helping you uh, get through this difficult period and we appreciate your enthusiasm knowing that on the other side of this we're gonna have a stronger downtown than ever and that uh, this kind of in investment is is worth it so with that Jay welcome uh, good morning uh, thank you mayor Weinberger uh, thank you Councillor King uh, thank you director Spencer who was a longtime volunteer for the Flynn uh, and thank you, Public Works Commission Chair O'Neill Vivanco. Uh, wow, so good to be here. Uh, my name is Jay Wall. I'm the Executive Director of the Flynn. Uh, on behalf of our staff, our board, our volunteers, and our crew, I really appreciate the opportunity for the, Clin uh, for the Flynn to be included in today's press conference and to encourage all Vermonters to come downtown to Burlington during this process and support business. We need you to come down and support us. We're here, we're open, we're eager to see you. This work will improve the city in so many ways, and it is absolutely in everyone's long-term interest to see this be successful. When complete, it will greatly enhance our downtown for years to come, including a new crosswalk right here that connects this park to the Flynn's front door. Woo, Woo indeed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I do believe the city is committed to minimizing the impact on Burlington business during construction. They have ensured us that they will be providing updated road closure and detour information on an ongoing basis through their website, street signage, and much more. The Flynn will then be able to amplify that information on our social pages, our website, and emails to audiences, school bus drivers, and artists so they can all get here on time and be ready to go. For all our audiences, we ask that you please, 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 please plan on allowing additional time when you come to the show to the Flynn to ensure you're in your seats for the start of the performance. I recommend making a dinner reservation at Trattoria de Lia or a Single Pebble or a Honey Road or at any of the many wonderful restaurants that make up our downtown. We want you to get to town early so you can navigate the construction, find parking, eat something yummy, and come to the Flynn all the ingredients for a magical night out. Since September, the Flynn has had about 60,000 people through its doors, and 40% of those were from outside Chittenden County. So I know that many people are looking to the city to help them navigate this process with up-to-date information. Our key message to audiences throughout the construction will always be to arrive early at the Flynn. This aims to give everyone enough time to make their dinner reservations and their show. We're so proud to be here. We're so proud to be part of the Vermont community um, and of all the shows that we're able to do and to work with the city. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you for including the Flynn and I'll see you at the show. Okay, so we got a couple more things to do here. Um, we, uh, the, the way we're gonna kind of symbolically break ground in a moment involves that enormous pipe behind us. We're going to have kind of a signing ceremony for pretty much anyone who wants to, to sign it and be kind of part of this uh, time capsule that's going to get put in the ground here in, the, in a sense. This, you know, this, that pipe will be going in and uh, isn't going to be dug up for a long time, we, uh, we, we, we certainly hope. Um, so we're going to do that in a moment. Before doing that though, are there any questions that the, the media has for, for me or any other speakers today? Yeah, great. Um, and Director Chapin Spencer spoke to this a little bit. There's been a, a higher level. And we, we learned a lot from, from that project. It was, and that was part of the plan from the start. We knew that uh, when we took on Main Street, it was going to be bigger and potentially, you know, and have more impacts on the downtown than St. Paul Street. So we started with that for that reason and um, took a lot of lessons from it. There's been a higher level of 
uh, advanced preparation on this project, a lot more drilling in the ground in advance to know exactly uh, uh, what to expect when we, we start unearthing th this part of Main Street. Um, we are working with uh, businesses in, in new ways to help make the connections to the city infrastructure um, more financially affordable and encourage p people to do that so there's less disruptions as a result of, of, of those sort of lateral failures. Um, and we have learned a lot about communicating with businesses and, and um, working with them to ensure that pedestrians have access uh, throughout, and that's what uh, Chapin Spencer was, was re referring to there. Um, we um, uh, have uh, you know, a major effort that's gonna go in, as you've heard throughout this, to communication and, and making sure that when, you know, surely there will be unexpected challenges that happen when you dig underground you always have some surprises uh, we are gonna work very hard to make sure that if there are any changes in the plan that's being communicated fully with with uh, affected uh, business owners and the public did I miss anything Chapin you want anything to that you did great all right great Yeah. Well, listen, um, public safety is the first priority. And, and you know, last week we, we took a vote at the council to go to the public and make sure we're adding resources to make sure we can continue to have fully funded public safety budgets going forward. We need to keep rebuilding the, the police department. We need, uh, we need the state to be a full partner in this and not be putting more people on the street, which was one of the big challenges we faced last summer where we saw hundreds of uh, people put out onto the street with no place to go in an incredibly tight housing market. We can't have any more of that this year. It's really important that the, the legislature um, extend the, the motel program so we can get everyone that is there permanently housed, which we have been doing successfully. So, you know, all, all of that uh, is, um, I and more um, is the, the heart of what we are trying to do and need to do going forward to make sure that the Flynn and all the other downtown businesses are properly supported, that we have the right downtown climate. Um, I, we are gonna turn that, we, we are gonna keep making that progress. We are gonna get the police department rebuilt. We are going to um, keep Burlington the welcoming, safe place that we have long enjoyed. Um, what I think tonight, today is about is, uh, is, is a, another um, level of work, this long-term long -term work and investment that um, is also necessary to keep Burlington what it's been for, you know, the greater part, you know, for, for hundreds of years now, this place of opportunity, this place where people uh, can, can invest and create businesses. Um, public infrastructure is essential to that. We had too many years where we were not making the right investments in our public infrastructure to sustain that kind of vibrancy as a city. We are now, this project's a big part of that. There's more than $40 million of additional investments to come and the streets, the blocks just a, a little farther to the north. Um, I think when we look back on this period, we will see this as, a, as an unprecedented level of public and, and private investment in the city that it, it really ensures that through the, the 21st century, Burlington remains a great city. <clears throat> All right, with that, um, let's, uh, can, does anyone, who's, <laughs> Samantha, what do we do exactly from here? Well, first of all, let, actually, I, one person I haven't called out here that uh, I need to um, is Scott Ireland. Uh, the Ireland uh, company, SC Ireland, is, uh, is, is the contractor for this project. Like so many of the public infrastructure projects happening in Burlington and elsewhere around the state, it is uh, pretty remarkable right now. Uh, you can't walk down Main Street without seeing a few Ireland trucks uh, roll by, whether it's headed to the Champlain Parkway or City Place or now to Main Street. And uh, Scott, we really appreciate the, the partnership and thank you for uh, hauling the, the pipe down here to help us uh, kick this off right. So You're thank welcome. you, Scott. Maybe Aaron Chapin will take the first two and the other speakers and you could give the cameras a second if you wanna follow us over there, you're welcome to. And then everyone who wants to sign it can sign it. Excellent, great, let's see yeah. that. <laughs> All right.